So why biomimicry? The idea is that you can use biomimicry to create innovative, sustainable design solutions that are resilient, they're responsive, they're resourceful, they're responsible, and they are really fun to work on. If you see a group of people working on biomimicry design, it's interdisciplinary, it's surprising, it's just so creative. And so that's where the buzz is happening and you get a lot of energy thrown, thrown at that. So that's part of the fun part of uh, doing biomimicry. So what do you get when you apply ideas and strategies from nature? You get fluid moving devices, fans, pumps, impellers that are between 10 and 85% more efficient by simply emulating the geometry of a, in this case, a nautilus shell, the most common geometry in nature. You get wind turbine wings that are, are blades that are something like 30% more efficient. You can get more wind power with less wind by emulating the strategy used by a blue whale fin. You get cars that are safer and 30% more efficient by emulating the shape and internal structure of a box fish. Who would have thought that? You get a, 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 um, a multi-purpose uh, building in Africa that uses 90% less energy for air conditioning by emulating the strategy found in a termite mound. You get wastewater treatment facilities that are so beautiful that you can have them indoors in individual buildings by emulating the strategies found in a wetland for cleaning water. You get vaccine suspensions that don't need refrigeration and don't need toxic chemicals. You can have multiple vaccines and all their boosters in one single shot that you can throw in the glove compartment of a Jeep and drive it to a remote village by emulating the strategy found in the little teeny tiny tardigrade. You get antibacterial coatings that don't kill any bacteria. So you don't, it's not a biocide, it doesn't kill anything, it doesn't generate superbugs by emulating the strategy found in this red seaweed. You get non-toxic dry adhesive that can be reused over and over again so it can allow for reuse and recycling by emulating the strategy found on a gecko's toes. You get business structures, and this is Chris Allen's um, a business logo, you get organizational structures that emulate the flows of information and resources in a rainforest that are dynamic, that are adaptive, that are responsive. You get non-flammable materials that are also non-toxic. I think this was invented by a, a, a Swede by using strategies found in citrus. And you get surfaces, whether it's paint or car surfaces, that are self-cleaning, don't need detergent, don't need hot water by emulating the strategy you found on the lotus leaf that we heard about earlier. So why biomimicry? When you apply biomimicry, you get creativity, you get collaboration, you get innovation, you get sustainability. And while doing all that, you get elegance, you get beauty, and you get inspiration. So I'm hoping some of you are asking, you know, how can I learn more about biomimicry? There's a lot of resources out there. Um, if you haven't done so already, read Janine's book. Um, it's very available. It's, it's used now, so you can um, get a hold of it. She's a fantastic writer. It's a great read. I um, encourage you to do that. Visit our website, biomimicryinstitute.org. Um, from there, you can find a, a wealth of information, contacts, things to read, videos to watch. You can visit the Ask Nature website, which Chris will be talking about in a, in a minute. It's one of our most exciting new projects out there. And you can invite a speaker uh, or take a workshop. You can invite a speaker to your organization, hold your own workshop, or attend one of the ones that we, we've been holding at the Institute. These are pictures from the Vera Cruz workshop this summer, which is incredibly uh, fun and uh, exciting learning experience. And uh, I think from there, I'll just let Chris take over and tell you more about um, the Institute and our, our projects. Thank you. Thank you.